Everything in the body has some meaning. We're gonna take a look starting at the head and going all the way down to the toes at some of the most interesting body parts that have often been categorized as maybe useless. Auricular muscles. Some people have muscles where they can wiggle their ears a little bit. These are rare. We have three on the outside. So these are remnant auricular muscles that originally had great functions, particularly with sound, the way your dog or your cat do. Even in many of the monkeys, our ancestors' ears are able to move a bit with sound. But now they've largely lost that function and they are usually considered vestigial. The term vestigial comes from the Latin meaning footprints. So there are structures that were thought to be sort of footprints in time, giving us little clues to what came before. So we, when we hear a sound, do not necessarily move our ears in that direction. We tend to move our entire head towards the sound. What's interesting to show that it's still hooked up, studies have shown that when we hear a sound, the brain areas that deal with these muscles have some activity. Plica semilunaris. When you look at the medial side of the eye area, you're going to see a vertical line. Here is the location. Next time you look at a dog or a cat or a reptile, you'll notice that they don't have two, but they have three eyelids. We have an up, we have a down. They have one that goes side to side. That's the nictitating membrane. In this little fold is the remnant. We know we don't have it in our closest relative, the chimp, and we don't have it in ourselves. It's a moistener, and apparently we have sufficient moistening without needing that. Wisdom teeth technically known as our third molars. You can see here they're largely problematic in which they bend or twist and you have to go to the oral surgeon to have them removed. Over the eons of our evolutionary changes, our diet became very varied. The molars are grinding teeth for eating leaves and vegetable type things. We became more omnivorous. This is a gorilla. And you can see how the face is very forward in a gorilla. In the course of human evolution, our face became very flattened in. Our molar teeth became shoved all the way back. The molars became squished in. We developed a very, very pronounced chin found only in Homo sapiens. It's a distinguishing feature of our species, and we're not exactly clear what made it come about. It's a byproduct. It's called a spandrel. Sometimes things occur in our body that had no discrete meaning or function. Male nipples. Nipples are extremely important structures. They're important for breastfeeding. But why do I have a nipple? The male nipple is not useless. It's highly stimulatable. It is an erogenous zone. And these are not unimportant things. By the way, for example, dogs and cats, they have multiple nipples. There's a developmental ridge where nipples appear. That's called the nipple line. Nipples can appear all along a series of lines. And you may find, for example, that somebody has a nipple all the way down in the pelvis or frequently in the armpit. It's a bit of a throwback. We sometimes call it an atavism. And that term is usually used for something that has missed a few generations or something that pops up due to an interesting recombination of genes. Body hair. We have hair, but our hair is not densely packed all over like our closest relatives. Hair's prime function is for thermoregulation, and it played a very vital part when our ancestors came from forest-like environments, helping to keep heat in. When it got too hot, it kept heat away. We lost our hair. The weather was changing, things were shifting on the plains of Africa, and our ancestors started to go to savannas. We were starting to be bipedal. We were starting to be hunters. We were starting to learn to run. And the loss of hair helped us 
in our active lifestyles with sweating. The glands involved in sweatings are much greater in us, and it allows us to maintain our temperatures better. Hair in our furry relatives had a purpose with little babies being able to hang on to it. We think we still maintain the little grasp reflex of newborns, and that has been related back to it. Certain areas in primates, particularly apes, became hairless early on, the face. We do a lot of signaling with our face. So do chimps, so do gorillas. We do retain some hair on the top of our head, in our anogenital area, and in our our armpit area. The brain has to be kept somewhat cool. Hair up there aids in cooling the area and protecting it. And that's why they seem to be retained. Erector pili muscles produce the effect of goosebumps. Here's a hair, here's an erector pili. What they do when they're stimulated is they contract, they force the hair to stand erect. It'll aid in the skin responding to some type of threat. You'll get the hair stand up in the back of your neck. When this occurs in our ancestors or your cat, the hair will become puffed up. What does that puffiness do? It increases the appearance of your size, so it's a display feature as well. Appendix. This is called the cecum, and this worm-like structure coming off of it is known as the appendix. It's not useless, it's very useful. Because it was removable, the appendix was thought to be vestigial, and worse, Bad because it can swell. What we've learned over the last few years is that the appendix has helpful bacteria and assists the gut when there are different problems and diseases. Coccyx. The coccyx was our primitive tail. Here we can look and see the vertebral column, the last three to five vertebrae that comprise the little funky thing that looks like a cuckoo's beak that's known as the coccyx. This is a vestigial structure. A distinguishing difference between great apes and monkeys is that none of the apes have tails. Our ape ancestors do not locomote the same way a monkey does. Swinging through a tree, they locomote differently. The more these animals started to walk on all fours, and then with us to walk bipedally, the tails were not useful any longer. And so it was pushed to the side. It became a vestige. Every once in a while, pretty rare, due to an interesting recombination of genes, somebody is born with a tail. Pyramidalis muscle. If you look in the mirror, you will notice your six pack. I don't have a six pack anymore. I never had a six pack. This forms what's called the rectus sheath. We have a muscle called the pyramidalis because of its shape. At one time, it was thought to give support to the abdomen. Various monkeys are shown to have it. In us, it's become very small and we're not really certain what it does. We might have lost it because of our unique mode of bipedal locomotion. Every time we've modified our locomotor behavior, certain muscles enlarge, certain muscles become less. We have a number of muscles in the body that have become largely vestigial. They've shrunk, their function has shifted. Plantaris muscle. We have a muscle in the leg which has become largely vestigial. And it's become just a tendon. The plantaris comes from the area of the knee, comes from the femur, and goes all the way down to have a separate tendon. They are larger in the apes. We have a number of muscles in the body that have become largely vestigial. They've shrunk. Their function has shifted. Flat feet. The human foot has been modified solely for the purposes of ambulation for running. In order to do that, we have a double arch system. One arch goes from front to back. We call this a longitudinal arch, and another goes side to side to reduce 
muscle usage. This is one reason why a chimp or a gorilla cannot ambulate or run the way we can. They don't have double arches. Their feet tend to be flatter. And every once in a while, we'll have somebody who genetically born with flat feet. Here's an individual who is showing what we call pes planus, or flat feet. The arches sink. When the arches sink, the muscles that go underneath it must fire. So anybody with flat feet has to use muscles to try to pull those arches up and that's very expensive. I'll also tell you how you can damage your arches. Nobody ever anticipated something like high heeled shoes. They're dangerous, they're hurtful, and they work to destroy what nature has taken millions of years to create. There have been body parts that have diminished greatly in function. We have things that we thought may have been useless that we've discovered are very useful. So our body is the culmination of our history. 